out of gasoline, Raider Gang falling apart, sounds like you can use a prayer. What a lovely day to head on over to Vinyl and Wax on Etsy and choose from a huge selection of Mad Max character prayer candles. Show up to the Thunderdome in style, right eternal. What happened to you? We did this ourselves. They're coming. It can't be. Where is everyone? Hey Survivors, Makeshift here. What'd you guys think of that commercial for Dogtown's Vinyl and Wax? Uh, he makes some really cool prayer candles. Alright, so check it out. He takes Mad Max characters and turns them into saints with some original art and then puts them on the side of prayer candles. I think this is pretty cool. He sent me a bunch and they are pretty darn awesome. I can't wait to bring them to Wasteland and just have them on in our camp. You know, just for anyone to go over and and give a little little Wasteland prayer to our feral gods. <laughs> There's characters like Toe Cutter and the Feral Kid and, of course, the Lord Humongous. Uh, these things are pretty cool. Anyway, check him out if you want. I started doing these Wastelander commercials. Uh, I've plugged a couple of them in already. I hope you enjoyed them. Um, there's going to be a lot more coming up. I'm not charging for these. You know, if you guys want to make a donation to have them on, that's cool. Um, but for now, they're just free. And I just I just want to include them because they're awesome. And you guys are awesome. And I want to know about what you're doing. And I want to help promote all that. So if you want to include a commercial, you know, try to produce the hell out of it. Throw some music on there. Make sure it's um, royalty free. Because if it's not, I might get in trouble. Um but yeah, send them in to theapocpost at gmail.com, and I'll do my best to get them on the air. Cool. But yeah, check out Vinyl and Wax on Etsy. I'm really excited about this episode. We're going to have V2A on to talk about all the stuff they're working on, and they have a lot going on. Oh, man. They're such a cool band. They've been at it for a long time, about two decades, and their music is awesome. They have completely embraced the, I mean... I don't mean to say they embraced it. They were ahead of their time when it comes to post-apocalypse stuff. They've been doing post-apocalypse for a long time. And uh, it's pretty cool. And when we get into it, they're going to talk about how they used to show up and feel a little weird. But now they can go to places like Wasteland Weekend and Old Town and uh, hopefully soon Apocalypse East. uh, Where, you know, they are the aesthetic. The aesthetic is them. They fit right in. Anyway, check out their interview. It's coming up in a little bit because we have a really good time. And uh, you know what's actually really cool is a few weeks ago, now, I was on their live show, their live YouTube show called the V2A Freak Show. Uh, they have had so many awesome celebrities, uh, people from the post-apocalypse community, all sorts of great guests on that show. And uh, they have a ball. And I think they do such a good job of like, keeping things moving and making it entertaining. Uh, It's pretty cool. And it is literally live. Unlike this show, which I recorded quite a while ago, which is kind of funny because I recorded this before I was on their live show, but it's coming out after I was on their live show. So uh, anyway, I did have a really good time later on in the episode. I'm going to tease it, but it was, it was fun. If you hear that sniffling, it's because my little chihuahua is right next to me. She's, um, She's playing on the bed, not with any toys or anything. She's just kind of playing with her paws. She's pretty cute. Anyway, guys, uh, what else is going on? So we're about six months from Wasteland now, and um, I think things are looking pretty good. If I'm going to put in, ready? Here's my prediction. It's happening. It's happening, y'all, because the world is changing really fast right now. We got vaccines flying out to all four corners of the earth. Uh, I know... In my hometown here, it's not my hometown, it's just where I live now. In Nashville, uh, they're doing a 10,000 person vaccination-a-thon today, which is pretty cool. You know, just trying to get as, as uh, as many needles in as many arms as possible so we can end this thing. But yeah, we're six months away from Wasteland. I think by then, a good majority of people who want to be vaccinated will be. And if they're not by then, it's because they just haven't made the time to get down to get one, right? Uh, Because we're already in like phase one, three, or whatever that means. So basically everyone high risk now has the ability to get that vaccine. And uh, my friend actually, we just went down to a a drugstore the other day and walked right up to the counter and asked about the vaccine. And they said, 
you know, you don't need any verification at this point to, to get it. You don't need to be like, yeah, I've got this medical letter from my doctor that says, sorry, that's my phone. <laughs> at this point, they just want to get as many people vaccinated as possible. So even though the policy right now is to keep things to, you know, the people most at risk, if there's no line, I mean, come on. Just get that vaccine in as many arms as possible. And that's what they're doing. So I, th I think we're looking really good. And the other thing is, Burning Man just sent out a letter to their large tribe saying, hey guys, think about getting ready. They haven't made an official call yet, but what they're doing is they're hoping that the event's going to happen. They're just like Wasteland. They're thinking, let's, let's work this thing like it's going to happen so that when it does, everyone's ready. Because if we're holding off, and, and waiting for the final word on whether it's going to happen or not, that'll be too late. You know, you need time to get this stuff ready. There's a lot of building to do uh, with Wasteland and with Burning Man. You know, there's a ton of art, a ton of organization that goes into this thing. And the, uh, the official event crew, you know, Wasteland, they just had their first work meeting, uh, what, last week, two weeks ago, by the time you hear this, three weeks ago, somewhere around there. Um, they just had a meeting with the build crew to start planning out their projects. So that's how far in advance all this stuff needs to happen, right? Oh, man. I'm so looking forward to it. And I hope you guys are, too. Because um, last year was a total bummer. Not being able to get out there in the desert and party and hang out with y'all. I say y'all because I've been in Nashville for four years now, which is pretty insane. You know, I, I started going to Wasteland when I was in Southern California. And uh, now I live... A three-day drive away, and that's that's towing a trailer to get out there. Oh, man. It's so far. <laughs> I know some people fly in, but I've just got too much stuff to bring. You know, you got the costumes. Uh, because I shoot, I have all my camera gear. And, and actually, bringing an RV has been a lifesaver because I have power, which is important. I have uh, battery backup power, so I have lights at night, which is great. I've got a radio so I can tune in to Wasteland Radio. I love that fallout morning. Don't you guys love that fallout morning at Wasteland? You turn the radio on early and all you hear is these songs from the 20s and 30s and 40s. It just makes you feel so nostalgic, doesn't it? And I don't mean for the 20s, 30s, and 40s. I don't think many of us were alive for that. Uh, I guess a couple of us could be if you were like born in 1949. No, lifespans are a little bit longer than that. Anyway, it's not nostalgic for, you know, back in the day, back in my day. It's nostalgic for playing Fallout. You know, that was that was an introduction for a lot of us into the post-apocalypse world. Even, even more so than Mad Max, especially a lot of you young guys and girls. Guys and girls, and, you know, we need to come up with a better way to say that. You people, you survivors, you wastelanders. Yeah, so like when Fallout 3 came out and you were like, man, it's a first-person shooter, but it's also a role-playing game. Uh, this thing's awesome. And uh, you were hanging around DC, listen to Free Dog. Three Dog? Free Dog. Listening to Free Dog. Hey, guys, this is Free Dog. <laughs> what am I doing? I don't know. Anyway, Fallout. Love those songs. Actually, I'm trying to learn a couple because how cool would it be if... Uh, I know, I know there's a couple like bards out in the wasteland uh, looking at you, the bard, because that's your name. There's a couple bards out there that play like an acoustic guitar and play some old songs and some original songs. I love that because, you know, don't get me wrong. We're about to talk to V2A. They're an amazing apocalypse EDM electronica group. You know, they just they're they're a performance group They're I mean, it's almost performance art what they do. Because they just go nuts, right? And in a couple weeks, we're going to talk to Attack, all hail the Crimson King. I keep saying that, although I'm pretty sure they just want to go by Attack at this point. But they're the Apaka Rock Band, and they're amazing. But um, even though there are these bands that do this like high-tech, uh, electronic, in-your-face performance at Wasteland, I also really love, and I want to see more of it, I love when people are like, you know what, in this apocalypse, we don't have power, we don't have electric guitars, you know, the last thing we want to carry around on our backs is a freaking three foot, 75 pound bass amp. We're just not going to do that. But I've got this acoustic guitar and uh, it's a little beat up. And now the springs are made of human, the springs, now the strings are made of human hair. But I remember this old song from 
the before times. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is I'd like to see a lot more acoustic acts. And actually, we're working on that with the Dukes of the Nuke. Stay tuned for more news about that because I think we're going to have something that Wasteland hasn't really seen yet that I think you guys are going to really enjoy. Um, anyway, yeah, the nostalgic fallout morning on Wasteland Radio. It wakes you up right. You know, you get your cup of swell coffee that's way too strong or way too weak, unless you go to the caffeines. They've got the great coffee. No cream, though. we got to work on that, caffeines. How do we get some half and half, some nice chilled, ooh, delicious, creamy, creamy half and half to go in that coffee? <laughs> I'm so demanding, aren't I? I'm just a, I'm a wasteland princess in a way. Nah, again, that camper. Man, I got some good coffee in my camper. All right, guys. Well, um, what else? What else is going on? I guess that's about it. So, um, yeah, v- V2A has played Wasteland for so many years, I can't even count them anymore. They're an incredible, amazing, fantastic band. They always draw a huge crowd, and they put on one hell of a stage show, which is pretty wild because they're actually traveling in from overseas. And uh, as any of you who fly to Wasteland know, you know, two carry-ons doesn't carry a whole lot of stuff, especially when you got to bring your costume and camping gear and all that. So having some local help definitely comes in handy. But these guys do it. They pull it off. They've pulled it off for so many years. And and in at Wasteland Weekend 2019, which is the last one, they managed to even bring snow cannons. Two of them. Not just one. Two snow cannons up on stage. And they created uh, a white Christmas? No. A white Apoximus? Apocalypta? Apocasno? Oh, man. Nuclear winter. is It's nuclear winter. Let's just get that out of the way. They created a snowstorm at Wasteland to go along with the storm they were performing on stage. And it was just amazing. These guys are great. They're so fun. They've got so many new things going on from their new music coming out. They've got their live show, the freak show, that they do on YouTube every week, which they've been doing for like a year, which is crazy. Good work, guys. And not only that, but they're working on a new comic book, a V2A comic book. And this is not like some some kid's comic book that he's putting together in his in his basement, right? This thing is legit. They got professional artists and and it's getting published to 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 sit next to like superhero comics in the store. This thing's going to be great. Uh, if you got in early enough, they did do a Kickstarter, and uh, I got mine pre-ordered. I think I got a signed copy. I sure hope so. But if not, I'm going to bring it to Wasteland and have them sign it for me. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy the show. We have a really great conversation coming up. Um, here is V2A. Hello, survivors, and welcome back to another edition of the Apocalypse Postcast, a podcast. My guests this week are an electro-industrial music duo coming up on 20 years of dominating dance floors across the globe. They are drone and mechanized of V2A. Hi, guys. Hi. Hello. <laughs> hello. Hello, world. Hello, wastelands <laughs> out there. <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys so much for coming on. I'm really excited to talk to you. Yeah, really happy to be on. Thank you. Yeah, so excited to be on your show. Absolutely. And um, this is going to come out after I'm on the freak show. So uh, <laughs> even though we haven't done it yet, I had a really great time, guys. That was so fun. <laughs> Especially the song and dance bit at the end. Awesome. <laughs> Loved yeah. it. The strip poker, the live strip poker, you mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Drone, if, if next time you could, you could keep your clothes on just a little bit longer. Yeah. <laughs> it's, just, it's just a habit on a Saturday night. You know. <laughs> awesome. So how's the pandemic been treating you guys? Because obviously live music, uh, especially in dance clubs, has just been right out for a, over a year. Uh, but you guys have really kind of shifted what you do in order to, to reach out to your audience. Tell me about a few of the projects you guys have gotten into. Okay, well, first of all, well, we are in the UK, as, as you know. So we are really grounded since March. So And we had a lot of lockdowns where we're not even allowed to leave the house. So we are basically, oh my gosh. we are confined in the house. <laughs> so, you <laughs> oh, know, no. just essential trips. This then brought us out to say, okay, you know, just for the for the time we start our freak show, you know, just to stay in contact with our people. <laughs> You know, that uh-huh. was like end March last year when we started, so almost a year. So yeah, then then the project started coming and coming. Yeah, so uh, yeah, we got the so we got the freak show, which is our weekly 
a streaming show where we get a load of guests from sort of post-apocalyptic world, Mad Max, film, TV, uh, graphic novels, comics, all the people we know, which has uh-huh. been a great, great laugh. Uh, done about 20 new songs. So that's about two albums worth. So uh, there will be a new album coming out this year called Doomsday, which is going to be really good. Ten songs, all built for the dance floor. So uh, look out for that. That's and, great. Uh, and even if it's your garden, you can go mad. <laughs> <laughs> and we're in the garden, and then uh, also we've been working on uh, our own graphic novel Caesar, well series, uh, and we've managed to write about five so far. Uh, the first one just came out on Kickstarter and was successfully uh, backed, and we made about ten thousand dollars. So that's really cool. We're working with all the top Marvel and two thousand AD Judge Dread artists on that. So uh, the first one we are just it's all written, drawn. Uh, lettered and we're just putting all the book together now and uh, the second book's gone off to the artist which takes about four months for them to draw so we're that's, hopefully going to do about two a year that's so great and I, I i was able to jump in on that kickstarter kind of at the last minute which was great um mm-hmm. and i cannot wait to get my copy because be this thing now. looks amazing <laughs> yeah. yeah well we, we, we the one thing with v to we always try and do everything uh, to the best of our ability, you know. So when I was chatting to uh, Dave, who co-wrote it with me, uh, mm-hmm. we wanted to do the best graphic novel we could. So we've got um, uh, Ryan Brown, who's one of the top cover artists for Marvel. He's done uh-huh. our cover. Uh, we've got PJ Holden, who's a top 2000 AD artist, uh, and he's doing all the all their page work. So again, we just we we wanted to work with all the best people. Uh, Jared's in it from Wasteland uh, Weekend. <laughs> He's got his own character. Uh, we've That's got amazing. Emil Minty, who uh, who is uh, the feral kid in Waste uh, in Mad Max Two. He's got his uh-huh. own character in it. We've got a ton of others. So it's it's, it's it's interesting. <laughs> it's it's very interesting. That's so great. And yeah, you 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 talk about having the uh, Judge Dread artist. I mean, this thing looks like something you would see on any comic book shelf anywhere. It's so high quality. Um, your characters look amazing, by the way. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> it, it, it really is. We, we, we've really tried to uh, – I've had this story banked around inside my head for about the last sort of five, six years because it's uh-huh. sort of – it's there's a blurred line between V2A, the post-apocalyptic band, and the festivals we go to, like <laughs> Wasteland Weekend and yeah. ones in Europe. You know you know what it's like. You've got your own alter ego and all, and all these stories sort of bouncing around. So – Right. It's it sort of it's a continuation of that. So there are, you know, um, there's places in here that are also festivals in the, co- you know, uh, so uh-huh. there's, there's venue, well, places in the comic that are, are, are venues and festivals. Uh, some of the characters you will actually you could actually meet at, you know, Wasteland Weekend. You might rock up and actually meet somebody <laughs> from the comic books. So it's, it's, it's a blurred line between that. And we want to sort of get more into the graphic novels and also possibly TV and film on it later on so big things things planned (laughs) amazing yeah i I think that's so cool that you're actually drawing from the real world to create this post-apocalypse uh narrative that's great yeah so it's the same characters so the the characters who we are on stage are the characters in the in the comic so you know it's all aligned so it's all the same so yeah so fun and what what what, what's the story what's the uh kind of the premise of this first novel uh, it, it, <laughs> without giving away too much right i don't want to give too much away it's uh what we've what we've done as well because we get on really well with um people like mark sexton who is uh-huh. one of the main storyboard artists uh for marvel and he also did fury road so again one of the things we've done with this is we've we've planned out like the first five books so the stories are interwoven and there's Very things good. dropped out in book one which probably isn't going to make much sense in book one, but by the time you get to <laughs> book three or four, there's there's things hidden in there, uh, and there's loads of secrets in there. It, it, and festival, if 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 you're from a post-apocalyptic uh, background and you go to the festivals and you know all this stuff, mm-hmm. it's going to make a lot more fun. There's a lot of hidden stuff in there that you'll find highly entertaining and amusing. Uh-huh. Uh, the story's really good. It's a, it's an epic story, actually, really really cool. That's Very so great. Excited. Yeah, I'm so excited to check it out. Um, where can people? If if the Kickstarter is done, can people still jump on this? Like, is it still available for sale? Uh, currently, we are now talking to Diamond Distribution, and it will be available in all comic shops around the world. So that's the next stage of it. That's um, so fantastic. If you just hold on, hold your horses, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and uh, 
it will be coming to a comic shop near you soon. But it is really, really exciting. When there's lots of love and um, enthusiasm put into the graphic novels, it's really fun. So we've even got uh, Kundalini, Mad Max 1. He's in it. He's got his own character. Uh, nice. We've got just some epic people. Uh, so super excited. And uh, for any post-apocalyptic fan out there, uh, I think you're going to really enjoy it. Uh, there is a sneak peek if you go to the V2A Wasteland Chronicles Facebook page. There's a map of the world. I saw and, that. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> there are places like Junk Town on there, which is a post-apocalyptic festival in the, in Europe, which is a really cool one. Uh, Haven Outpost, that's a uh, post-apocalyptic festival in the UK. Uh, Wasteland's down the bottom. Uh, uh-huh. And there's also Uranium Springs is on there as well. So some of this, some of the stories are sort of based in this in these worlds. Awesome, and I think I think that's so cool um, that the post-apocalypse community is now this worldwide entity, and because people go to multiple festivals, um, you know, it's it's been great to have uh, some some of y'all Europeans come over here yeah. uh, to the American festivals. I know some Americans have gone over to the European festivals and they keep popping up all over the place. And I yeah. just think that's so cool that we're so interconnected around Community, the world based on this it. one love Although, of a Although, genre. I have to say one thing. The apocalypse yeah. in my head was different than it was really is at the moment, <laughs> I have to say, a little bit. You know, I was ready to get the guns out and yeah, let's do this and then nothing. You just not let me <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's a bit so different. We, you were one of those people that was ready to just be like start a raider clan. No, and not this. I'm just waiting the for the zombies. No, I was more like the zombies <laughs> oh. fighting the zombies, but there was none yet. But yeah, let's watch the space. <laughs> yeah, well, with some people's um, uh, mental health uh, from being locked in the house for so long, I think the zombies might still be at our doorstep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's. It's, I don't think it's far off, and we're only at the beginning of twenty one. So. <laughs> <laughs> but also, who would have thought that, you know, after this sort of post-apocalyptic event, uh, the number one thing would be toilet paper? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Who saw that one coming? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so next it was... time I come to the wastelands, the, the RV is full of toilet paper, you know. <laughs> yeah, you'll you'll be ready to trade and I'm set up bottle yeah. caps. It's I'm, gonna I'm be no. <laughs> yeah, Lou roll. <laughs> yeah. There you go. That's that's the next for the uh, for the merch shop is some V2A toilet paper. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah, that's a good idea for some <laughs> Definitely, definitely. But oh yeah. and they can turn it around and say, Well, we can do a shit on V2A. So we have to take that one out. <laughs> Fantastic. But, but, but also so everybody, because we, we've headlined all the post-apocalyptic festivals around Europe and, and, and some over in the States, etc. Everybody's awesome. Uh, the post-apocalyptic community is is an awesome. It's, it's like nothing else out there. Everybody looks after each other. There's sort of no egos. Everybody, everybody's having fun. Everybody's sort of got their own characters. It's such an awesome um, group of people, creative people. So yeah. we love yeah. it, actually. Yeah, it's so true. And and I think that's one of the things people find so surprising when they're not used to um, subcultures in general, but but especially the post-apocalypse subculture is just how inviting and welcoming everybody is. And it's growing, you know, who would have thought it's just getting bigger and bigger and more people get into it. And it's great to see. Yeah. And as I feel like um, because of channels like uh, Amazon Prime and Netflix, where they're literally throwing money at pretty much anyone that wants to make a movie <laughs> they've yeah. kind of um, made made post-apocalypse movies come out all the time so everybody has something to latch on to um, just last month tribes of europa came out and um yeah and so, sorry guys this is <laughs> i know we're about four weeks away from <laughs> <laughs> um but but yeah, when Tribes of Europa came out, I think that that was um, such a cool show and a new take um, where they kind of put a little bit of like fantasy elements into it and um, just gave us a whole new apocalypse to latch on to. Yeah, well, we had one coming out over here and it's a School is Out Forever. So uh-huh. which is from Rebellion. So we only watched it last week because they were on the show yesterday. So and it's like that is a total different spin and it's awesome as well. Nothing I expected either. So it's like Yeah, really, that was really good. Yeah. What what was that one called? Because I need to check it out. Uh, schools out forever. And what it is is what would happen in England in like a private school oh. boys' school 
if there was a catastrophic event and how would society sort of disintegrate really good actually because remember the uk is a lot different to the us you know we don't really have guns over here and, right you, you know what i mean and and you know You're we don't have deserts lot got, yeah lots of tea <laughs> drinking and, and biscuits and crisps and stuff like that so it, it's interesting and it was um initially we thought it was going to be like a Shaun of the dead comedy horror it uh-huh. isn't it's gritty it's it's oh gritty. good definitely <laughs> some of the deaths were like even i was like oh <laughs> <laughs> it's far better than war, uh, The Walking Dead as far as sort of deaths and stuff. It's like, holy hell. Yeah, not the zombies. effects are good. So it's not, you know, which was for me because I, I'm tired of everything is staying zombie, zombie, zombie. And it uh-huh. doesn't need to be. You know, it's, it's more realistic how it really would be. So, yeah. So it's, it's yeah. yeah. I think oh, a bit so more great. creativity is, is needed now because a lot of this stuff's done, done so much. Right. You know, I'd, I'd prefer a new take on stuff or, or you know, a bit of imagination, a bit Overhaul. of creativity. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I feel like um, post-apocalypse and I'm, I mean, this is coming from someone who did a post-apocalypse web series because I could do it for free yeah. <laughs> because yeah. you can just go out and find worn down locations and, you know, you don't necessarily need, need named actors or huge production design because you can buy your costumes uh, yeah, that's it. at consignment shops. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like, you know, there's a, there's a kind of low access to getting into the post-apocalypse. And so a lot of people will, will just barely get in to tell, you know, a story they want to tell. Whereas, you know, there's so much room for imagination and to take things to the next step and to offer up something new. Definitely. Yeah, totally. Definitely. Yeah, which is something you guys are doing with the comic book. That's it. Well, so it's, it's, yeah. So, yeah, Definitely. as we said, we're talking to people, you know, with films and everything. Because we have the whole series. The whole story is already there. So it's not only it's comic one, it will stop. We are already at the end, you know. We, we are already at number five. Yeah. And and again, virtually all TV st- uh, shows and streaming stuff, because we, 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 we have a, a, a really good contact base. Uh, uh-huh. you know, we know quite a lot of really good people uh, and again most of this stuff comes from graphic novels so that was a good way to to get our story out there with all our friends from 2018 all the judge dread artists so first yeah. of all we could do an epic thing but also this kind of lead on to uh you know some more visual stuff uh, around it if that makes yeah. sense so great i know you guys have been very busy putting on uh, a new YouTube channel you created called the the VTUA Freak Show. Uh, yeah. how, where did that come from? Well, personally, you know, I'm very much of a very close to our fans. You know, V2A, when we go out, we do our gigs, no matter where, we're very close to our fan base. So, and when it then came out, it was like, well, we, we can't do any shows because it was like a, a full stop, end off, nothing can happen. So I was like, well, that's not fair because people will sit at home. We need to do, find something. And that's when we, you know, said, let's come on, let's start and do some freak shows just for fun. Yeah. You know, and get the ball rolling so we could stay connected with, with, with our fans because because, um, I mean, we could do live shows, but like Kevin said, or like uh, John said before, we really want to make sure everything what's our what, what we put out there is up to top standard. So like we yeah. make with our shows, we always make sure everything is top standard. So because our band is, is everywhere in the world, so we have drummers <laughs> in Germany, we have keyboardists in Manchester, we are down in the middle of England. So, oh my gosh. And, and then to say, okay, let's do a gig, it would be not look very professional, it just would look cheap. So that's why we said, well, we, we can't do a concert really as such. You know, it's just not up to our standard. So let's uh-huh. start the chat show, and that's how the chat show started. And, and the cool thing with the chat show as well, we've got so many friends, uh, so many actors from Mad Max films and so many people we know from Wasteland Weekend and, you know, from the scene uh, and comic book artists and stuff like that. It's Even really from the just movies. All... I mean, we had from, you know, Fury yeah. Road, several people on. And it's just like it brings the community together. And actually, you know, it's just like a, a build up and it's it's a community. So we, we for some reason, now we really have a good following. So Freak Show now suddenly is part of people's lives. So if we don't do one, you know, we get a lot of messages. Don't be people. <laughs> and it's like, we will. And, and, so, and, it's yeah. good, and it's good as well because we're getting bigger and bigger people coming to us to come on the show. So we've we right. literally got, we're booked out for about the next three months. And we've got some epic celebrities coming on. But mm. it's it's more... 
we're just excited. We're we're bored. We, we, we don't we, we don't do very well with boredom. So we normally in a year we do about seventeen, eighteen festivals, and because uh-huh. we can't do any, and we're stuck in the house and we can't even go out, we have to make entertainment for ourselves. So, we're, you know, just chatting to these people and you sort of well, what was it like being set on fire in Fury Road and thrown off? <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's all the stuff you've always wanted to ask people. Right. Yeah. And I think it's it's important to remember that for for all the creatives out there that are stuck at the house with no audience, there's audience out there that don't have anything to go to. So they're just as hungry for this stuff as as we are to create it. Right. Oh, totally. Totally. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And also, I love your YouTube channel as well. Oh, so, thanks so much. Uh, your content is awesome. Yeah. Very, oh, really, I really, really appreciate that. We Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, next it's... time, next time we go over to Wasteland, we're going to have to hang out more because I don't think we've a- have we actually met. I'm not sure. No, no, that's the crazy part. I've been like on stage with you guys with camera in hand, <laughs> <laughs> but we've never actually shaken hands, which is absurd. So crazy. next time we go to the casino and get to yeah, <laughs> yeah, and actually that's. <laughs> That's one of my plans for next wasteland is to put the camera down a little bit more yeah. and just try to be there, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, even we we've been there now four years and you know, after one but we even not have seen everything yet and it's so many hidden places, you know, I want to see and sit down and, you know, do the things. Right. Yeah. Well we yeah, didn't and- we didn't even realise that the atomic cafe, the drinks were free. We only found that out last. It's like, what? In the chat, yeah, someone told us. Some people are like, what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's I, I, move I, in that. next time. <laughs> yeah, I've got um, mixed feelings about the Atomic Cafe. Uh, yes, the drinks are free, and that is wonderful. But <laughs> <laughs> what are you drinking? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of like um, the cocktails that they made for you back in college where they were like, I don't know, here's some plastic bottle vodka and some and yeah. some pink pink pinkish juice (laughs) (laughs) you got to be careful how many drinks you consume from the from the atomic cafe but also uh, we've got a a bit of a tradition now so uh every time we go we we've got our own v2a fire water Uh uh-huh which is bad which is good but bad but it's a it's a war boy (laughs) destroyer so do you want to explain a bit more about that me well they drink it and got really really not well but it's like everybody you know it's their own choice so it's, it's really nice to drink. <laughs> I, I enjoy it but i've never been ill but there were a lot of people who have been drinking too much like we have got our our cage fight had captain timmy who was sponsored by us he had a oh yeah <laughs> i love captain timmy exactly and he had two big bottles of of the fire water and i think he was not too well and poor rose <laughs> had to carry him home which took her all night i think <laughs> wow yeah. i didn't know that uh that the um the cage fighters could get sponsors that's pretty wild yes so yes. yeah timmy is <laughs> our our super cage fighter <laughs> <laughs> Every fight, we are there in his corner. And we had to pick Captain Timmy because he's half the size of everybody else. Yeah. Uh, he's com- The first time we met him, I think he was in like a, a mongoose onesie with an umbrella. And <laughs> yeah, that sounds like, about right. And he was like, hey, I'm a cage fighter. We're like, yeah, we yeah, love right. you. You're our kind of guy. <laughs> it's so true. And uh, for anyone that doesn't know, uh, the cage fighting we're talking about is the Wasteland Gladiators. This is a bunch of like... Uh, SCA type guys or um, like, you know, people that actually fight in real life for fun. Um, and there's so real armored, real weapons, you know, usually like padded cudgels, that kind of thing. No sharp blades, but um, there's a lot of real fighting that happens in there. And they're all friends. They love to just kind of fight they each other it, for fun. Yeah. But yeah. the thing is, it was the first time. It takes a lot of time to make me speechless. <laughs> but the first <laughs> time I've ever seen them. And my mouth was just open. And I was like, this can't be serious. It was literally full on. It's like full on. <laughs> full yeah. contact. Yeah. And but, it's yeah. interesting because talking to them, they used to have like a point system. You know, if you get if you get tagged you know, in the head this many times or something like that, uh, then you're supposed to go down and you lose the fight. Um, eventually, they just decided that they fight until they're happy. And then yeah. once they're happy, they either have won or they've fallen down. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. easier. And, easier because we, and because we love Captain Timmy, he always no, normally comes second. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he's won a whole lot of fights, but he gets up over he gets and up. over again. He has heart. He's yeah. a lion. He has a lion heart. It really That's does. It. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, 
Yeah, and the uh, the Gladiator arena at Wasteland is right next to the stage. So oftentimes you can watch both shows kind of simultaneously if you position yourself right. Yeah. I remember one time I was actually watching a V2A show from the Gladiator fight, and you guys put on an intense, loud, big, bright show, and you bring <laughs> some of the biggest production value to that wasteland stage that I've ever seen. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what, what, what brought about this like giant show for, you know, a music genre that's normally a guy behind a laptop. No, but that's what we said from the beginning. We are all, show, you know, we want to go out there. We want to deliver the best. So for me, just standing behind a, a laptop and, and show you my hands would not be it. <laughs> you know, I was just like a theater. I, I was just entertainment. I was just going mad. And that's always has been the way. I think last year was the first time that even Thunderdome didn't start until our show was finished. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> so they said it's not worth it. So they, they were waiting for our show to finish and then started Thunderdome. So which is like, you know, people are... People love it. It's ent entertainment. People want to be entertained. And I, I don't, I personally, even so, I'm very much a lover of electronic music. Uh -huh. And some people, it's, it's, you know, they're just, it's literally two people or one person behind a keyboard and doing the music, which depends on the person, depends on the music, can be very atmospheric and can be very good. Right. However, in our kind, I, I want to go out there. I want to give it my all. Yeah. You know, I want to entertain. We are a show. So it's not like it's just electronic music, but we want to give it all. And we're, we're like that everywhere we go. So initially, um, a few years ago, we supported Combi Christ across Europe. Uh -huh. uh, and our first gig with them was in France. And uh, I think it was in Nantes, yeah. <laughs> in Nantes, in, in France. And we, and, uh, every, we, we are... <laughs> We, we, we love the band so much, and it's such a release from the daily grind that when we do a gig, we just go mad. Whether there's a million <laughs> people there or one person, we don't care. It's a full-on show every time because we're that excited to, to perform. So we were in France, and people were stage diving. Everybody was going mad, and it was it was like a riot. It was brilliant. <laughs> so, yeah, and, and then the promoter said to us, have you played here before? No, nah, first time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like, have you played here before? Have you got a big fan base here? No, never even been to France before, mate. And they were like, so we did that every night. But it but was like, um, yeah, Combi Christ and us, it we just were a really great fit, and it just was the wildest tour ever. <laughs> that was a good It's end. just like, yeah. That's and we so do great. that every year now at Wasteland Weekend because uh, around Europe it's easier for us to bring more of our props because we've got like a big show. Right. Um, where it's quite hard at Wasteland because of flying. Uh, but as you've noticed, we've sort of – we have like 50-odd people on stage. We probably <laughs> – <laughs> we, <get it. laughs> we have the biggest amount. It's like every year we try and go bigger, and also – a uh, big shout out to Mechanized uh, because um, last year or two yeah, years ago, whenever two, it was, two yeah. years ago, on the 10 year anniversary, uh, she managed to get us the two biggest snow cannons. And I Available think we were the first, in LA, yeah. First ever band to bring <laughs> snow to Wasteland Weekend. <laughs> so we made it snow. And it's like, you know, well, for us, being in Europe, we've seen snow. You know, where I, where I was born, I grew up with snow. For me, it's something normal. It's a great right. effect and all this. And then I was like, oh, yeah, it's a great idea to get it in the desert and make it snow. This is so crazy. But then after the show, people came and they hugged me. And I said, do you know that I never, ever in my life seen any snow? And cried. Really? And I was like, it, it touched me so much. And I was in my head, I did not even have that. You know, I just wanted to bring chaos. But yeah. even to, <laughs> you know, but even to give someone such a feeling to cry and hug, to say thank you so much, it was the first time in my life to see snow. And I was like, they were gobsmacked and they were so grateful. And that really touched me. You know, things like that touched me because, you know, for me, it doesn't matter if I have a show where, like, we, we play a show with 10,000 people, but then you have shows, sometimes only 50 people are, but we bring yeah. the same show because each single person comes there, paid their money, and paid for you. So and for me, it's important to still give them the show they paid for. So I would never be like, oh, it's only 10 people, I can't be bothered. I've never, ever been like that. And even, you know, John is the same, so, or, or even, you know, with Skelly. So we all, we, no matter where we were, we brought a show. And, and and now people like uh, we've got our own hardcore fan base called the Culture yeah. B2A. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and there's, there's a lot of those. I think we've got about I think we've got twenty one thousand on the one Facebook site and about a thousand oh of the real goodness. hardcore yeah. nutters. But, yeah. but when we play like a goth <laughs> festival in Germany, if you can imagine twenty thousand goths all in black, 
and yeah. then our and then our guys rock up, our fans, and they're you know they're all, all waist landed out and, <laughs> and, and, and all this lot of shouts about needs more to it and, and all this kind of stuff. And it's it's a it's a whole new scene we're creating, especially around yeah. Europe, because there is nothing like it. And it's so, so you can spot our fans a mile away. And it's a community. As I said, we, we're very close to our fans. It's not like we're going on stage and you never see us again. We just want your money. Right. But after the show, we always go out and meet our guys. And, you know, the fans are like our closest friends. You know, it's our family. And that's what the cult is about. And I think that's what the cult likes. That's why we have freak shows. So that's everybody. That's why everybody appreciates it. So we still stay in contact, even so I didn't think it takes longer than a month. <laughs> <laughs> and look a year later we are still doing freak shows and this yeah yeah but so great um, yeah now you guys you put out your first album back in 2002 mm. were you were you already doing the post-apocalypse thing or has that become something that you've grown into i was already well I, i've been a mad max fan since about the age of seven <laughs> so i it's it's uh uh, Emil Minty and the Feral Kid corrupted me as a small child. I, I wanted to be a cross between Wes and uh, uh, and the Feral Kid. Uh-huh. So, so I always had that Mad Max leaning. Um, I was in a, another band first, and I used to DJ and run my own um, sort of electronic industrial clubs. Yeah, uh, and that, and we met uh, me and Mech and I was met in London at a club I was DJing at. Um, so. That's where we just started to started the band off. The band was more well at the time when we started it off. It wasn't more like the looks. It was more about the music because yeah, yeah. it was just like synth pop and really soft music around. And, and Bo was John and I were quite lovers of quite hard music, you yeah, know, dancey music, melodic, and all this. And it just didn't happen. It was all just soft and it was just boring. So that's when we started <laughs> just to bring out. So our whole journey really has been a very rocky road because we always did what nobody really the mainstream wanted but we didn't give a shit we just right. you know, because we did it for us <laughs> you know we were there just to do our own stuff and yeah and look we are still here and it's getting bigger and better i mean we've been always been you know different we always been dirty and it just developed into this and we, we more and more could become us and you know yeah. our fans appreciate it for us Oh, that's so great. So the world's almost growing into you guys rather than the other way around. Yeah, right? yeah, that's how it feels. Yeah. Well, V2A as well is is German, is a sort of the German sign for stainless steel. So we were shiny and chrome before uh. it was a thing. <laughs> yeah. I was going <laughs> to I was going to ask you what V2A meant. So that's yeah. like the the stainless chemical steel. compound or that's yeah. It. Yeah, in Germany. Yeah, the stainless steel. Got it. Oh, that's so fun. Yeah, so that's how we started, you know, we, and always has been all, you know, everything has been the play around it, you know, so we always be part of it without people. We always gave our secret messages out, but uh -huh. you know, for yeah. people to find it. So, yeah. And, and we're, the, <laughs> we're the kind of band that we've always wanted to be the first B2A, not the second VMV nation or the next one. You know what I mean? We're good yeah. friends with Ronan from VMV. We, 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 we're really good mates with all these other bands, but uh -huh. I, I would never want to put all my effort into a band to be a clone of somebody else All right. you mean, also, just do your own thing be, be creative and just <laughs> it's you know yeah the music scene is like that you know a lot of people are copies of other bands because these people are successful so we copy exactly their sound so we will become successful it's boring you know do your own shit and and and, and grow your own like like you know with us it, it at one point it, it takes a longer road yes of but, course but it, it's you know the fruits are much nicer because you know you did it you know yeah. on your own good yeah. Yeah, that's so true. And, and yeah, I, I feel like, you know, the music industry is definitely based on, oh, look, that, that group over there is doing something successful. So me as a label, I, I want one, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. you yeah. know, and so you kind of create, you know, I want one of those, which is why yeah. we end up with like the bravery versus the killers and that's that kind of thing. Yeah, exactly that. Uh, and especially with festivals as well, because um, it, it, there's so many very similar bands, you know, I, I love, I love industrial and, and uh, sort of, uh, you know, good mates with Ronan from VMV, et cetera. But you can go to some German festivals and VMV are headlining, but you've got like eight other bands on before them and they're all trying to do the same lyrics and the same keyboard sound. And you just think, God, it's this is boring, so yeah, dull. <laughs> and, and, and especially now as well with the electronic scene. Um, like I love uh, Combi Christ. 
Uh, and Andy from Comedy Christ is an awesome guy. And they they really bring it live. You see Comedy Christ and Ramstein and all these kind of bands live. They bring it. They've got a show. And their own, that's their own style. You know, and Comedy I, I, Christ brought their show. Ramstein brought their own. Yeah, definitely. You know, they, yeah. they, they created their own. And that is what makes it special and, you know, and to watch I'm... someone. And that's, that's I think, for my, myself, that's yeah. what, what lits the fire inside of me. And I get excited. <laughs> I, I can't watch now people stood behind a table twiddling a knob. You're right. It's like really. Well, it depends. I like I like witch house. So basically, that's what it is. But then it's a total. It's a smaller in, event, and it's a total. You are in a room with you. You are more into the music than what's happening on stage, really. So it, it depends again what kind of music you're listening to or what, you know. So yeah, right. So it depends on the music because if you have like really aggressive music and dance music, you want show. <laughs> yeah, you know? and um, and so. You know, over the course of it's been 19 years since that first album came out now. Yeah, um, that's a long time in the music scene, uh -huh. you know, where where new trends kind of pop up every five, 10 years. Yeah. Um, how have you guys managed to stay innovative enough to keep your those albums charting? Uh, uh, well, from my side, I think it's because we are very um, pig headed, very st strong minded <laughs> and just ignore everybody else. We, we literally ignore what everybody else is doing and just do the stuff that we think would be cool uh -huh. and that we like yeah, we, our own that stuff sense. and it's it, it's lower you know it's our escapism out of real life so we we never looked as i said from the beginning we never looked what other people do we just did what we wanted to do and that's why whatever happens outside we we didn't you know where we watched it yeah fine i liked it or i didn't like it whatever you know everybody can do what they like but for us we just we stayed on our road we just did what we like yeah so it's kind of like you know if you if you try to copy what other people are doing you're automatically having to compete with them in a way whereas if you're doing your own thing you're only competing with yourselves exactly yeah and this and, is and thing. also it's more creative freedom i think you can <laughs> be yourself and you can just do your own thing also i think there's so it's a shame there's so many bands who are either scared of being creative or lack the imagination or whatever uh -huh. um do you know what I mean? There's so many clones of different bands instead oh, yeah. of just people who are unique and do their own shit. I'd rather do our own thing. And if people like it, they like it. If they don't, they don't. I don't really care because it's stuff we want to do. Um, right. But those then people around the world have gravitated to us because they like the stuff we do. Does that make any sense? And I of think course. A very important key as well, I think, is that people see like bands like, yeah, I don't know, Slipknot or whatever. And you think like, oh, you can make millions. So I make similar music. <laughs> I don't need to work. I become Slipknot now. Well, yeah. it's such a hard road. And it's so hard to make any money just to be a musician. That's why we have our day jobs, because otherwise we wouldn't be able to do what we're doing. But, you know, we had to support that. Without our jobs, we could not have supported that. And I think that is where a lot of people go wrong because they think we make now a band, we sound like so-and-so, and we are out there and we will killing it, you know. And, and it's now, unfortunately, them times are gone. You know, that was maybe in the 80s like that. Nowadays, it's such a competitive market. Yeah. And so label and promotion controlled, you know, it, it, it's hard. So that's why people, when they're set up, they should set up with their heart, you know, have your job, but do it with your heart and do what, what you like, you know, and, and like, Definitely. don't care what's out there. And at one point, it will come the point that actually your music will be acknowledged, but it's a hard road. And I think that, that's a, a reason, another reason why V2A is successful is because we don't have that pressure over us of we've got to try and make a living out of it and try and, you know, what sells this week, what's different next, you know, you know what I mean? Right. And yeah. We can just it's say, Stop that. Pressure, we're yeah. going to play this <laughs> festival and I'm going to do a, you know, a 19 hour song on a triangle. I think that's, a, you know, look, we have a lot <laughs> yeah. of friends. We have, like, <laughs> we have a lot of friends who are full-time musicians. Look for a year now. They they stand still. Nothing, they have yeah. no income. Oh, and yeah. it's like and like, you know, like Gary Newman, he released something and what did he get? A check of forty seven pounds or thirty seven pounds for two he million plays. Yeah, a couple plays. of million plays, yeah, on, on oh my so, gosh. Yeah, yeah, but it's yeah. like, you know, it's, it's for them, they're the hardest hit and they're not really supported. So I'm grateful that we still got our jobs. You know, this is like this will tick us over. <laughs> you know, and right. I I feel for my friends who don't have the option and it's like it's it's a hard time for everybody. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, even with um, the Apocalypse Post, if if I wasn't still doing my real world job of yeah. um, being a filmmaker and making commercials and documentaries for people, yeah. uh, I would not be able to stay doing this. There you go. Yeah. You know, it's it's yeah. the same. It's the same principle, but unfortunately, you know, it, it depends on the people's circumstances. But it's like, I don't know. Sometimes it's I don't know if it's simply you know. As I said, they, they see this band and they say, I can easily do that. But <laughs> no, you can't. It, it's, it's, you know, possibly Slipknot. You know, it took a lot. Oh, there are so many producers, like with Rammstein. They right. possibly have so many producers behind to make it, to make sure it will be a success. I mean, on the Rammstein show, you have like, I don't know, 10 lorries turning up just with explosives. Well, which normal right. band will be able to afford that? You know, for it's, us, exactly. you know, for us, it yeah. was already a stretch to bring the biggest snow cannons out of LA. <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> but it's like people don't see that. There's a lot behind the scene, what people don't understand. And it's like, yeah. And I think, and, and it's a shame because there's some so good musicians out there. But I feel sorry for them because they will never make the cut because they, they do not have the connections. They don't, you know, slide in and have the way. And it's it, it's a hard road, which is a shame because music is not what music used to be, that you come out, you are awesome musician and you are credited for it. It's it's like you be at the right time with the right person and the right politics, person likes you. Yeah. It's all politics worldwide. It's always the same. Yeah. But at the same time, it's also been very democratized because of, you know, uh, your gear getting a lot cheaper. You can literally record in your living room yeah. and and you can you can publish yourself. You might not be able to reach everybody, yeah. everybody the way you want, yeah. but and it takes anybody. Longer. That's yeah. what I say. It takes longer, but people want like immediate. They don't they want to put down their jobs yeah. and let's get big. But that doesn't work nowadays <laughs> like that. It doesn't. But so yeah, it and, takes but, its but time. But I think as well, because it, uh, equipment is cheaper and it's it, easier to make music, I think that's what sort of killed some of the live scene because some of these bands have never played live and never never trod that path. Do you know what I mean? They've just done stuff right. in their bedroom and then suddenly they're on stage in front of 100 people behind a laptop and twiddling a knob. <laughs> do, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah. It's I not think, like uh... there's drummers and there's guitarists and they've, you know, it's, I, it, I think there's quite a lot of not that great bands out there, which is a shame. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And there is a certain element to the grind of having to, you know, practice over the course of a lifetime and get better and, and create a live show and and collaborate with other artists. Yeah, totally. And also I think it's only when, because we try a lot of new songs out live Uh uh, and see what it goes like, see how it feels like, because there's nothing like playing live. And it's only that sort of feedback from the audience where you think, bloody hell, this is awesome. I love that, you know, this song is going to be awesome. Uh, Whereas (laughs) if you're doing all of this in your own bedroom and you don't have that sort of feedback, does that make sense? Oh, we, totally. We, you know, so we get the feedback. So some of the songs are like, yeah, they're going. And then you have like a curve where you feel like, oh, this fell flat there. So we're going back to the studio, tweak it. So we already played songs live before they're even on CD. So for us to yeah. develop. So it's yeah. our development process kind of thing. So by the time it goes to the CD, it will be 100%. We, we hit the nail with it. So every song. So we will never... I can say, well, you know, ever have like just an album filler on there. Like a lot of bands have two super hits and then just album fillers. Ours. <laughs> right. We always make sure each song is tested and proved. Well, we can't promise that now with the pandemic times. But <laughs> 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 we have to find a way. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, but that's normally how we do it. Right. Um, and you guys mentioned that you play a couple, almost a couple dozen uh, festivals a year normally when we're not yeah, in the yeah, end times. Yeah. Um, do you, you usually get to stick around like you do at Wasteland for a couple of days and like yeah. interact with your audience like that? Oh, definitely. So, well, it depends on the festivals. You know, some is a one day festival. So you stick there the day and then you go. But I mean, you have like, in, like in Germany, we have like a couple of really big ones, which go like two, three days or even one is five days. So we, we then turn it into like our mini holiday to, you know, to enjoy it as well on top of it. Uh-huh. We do our show, but we then stay there and then we go around looking at other shows or meeting people, meeting greets and go out for drinks or whatever, you know. So, yeah, yeah. So it's important for us. Yeah, I think that's it's kind of a unique thing um, 
and these post-apocalypse festivals are just like that. Like you, you know, some bands they're, they it's part of their tour. So they'll show up, play real quick and, and get back on the bus and head to yeah. the next venue. Yeah. Um, but there is such an opportunity to like stick around, hang out with your fans, uh, get some feedback totally. and, and enjoy some of the other acts. Right. Yeah. But I think that's where it comes in. If it, if you do it professionally and rely on to play as many shows as possible to make the money or with us, it's for us, it's, it's our freedom. It's our, it's, it's our baby. It's our hobby. You know, it's yeah. even so, it's like full time job. So we have like two <laughs> full time jobs, but we still see it as our hobby. You know, it's it's our brain release. We go out there, and it's very personal to us. So we don't see right. it as a, as a you know it's our income. We don't see it as a, a financial income. You have buns. You know, we have someone who used to be the prodigy. They had a gig in Brazil, then were straight on the plane off to uh, Russia. So uh -huh. obviously they can't because they're 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 playing every time. They're just on the go to make money. Right. And, and I, I don't know yeah. if that would be a lifestyle I would like to have. It is if it, it is it's... fun touring. Touring is is a great laugh on a tour bus. But hard. Yeah. But but, <laughs> but it really is an awesome laugh. It is great fun. <laughs> um, but I don't know if I could do it all the time. Sometimes I think now as well, pit bands don't really tour so much. They play festivals on like a weekend. That's uh -huh. bigger now. Does that make any yeah. sense? There's less oh, little definitely. clubs. It's more you go somewhere, play in front of 10,000 people on a festival over the weekend with uh -huh. 20 other bands, and then the next festival's in a couple of weeks' time on another weekend somewhere else. It's, uh -huh. it's more like that now, I think, than mm. sort of you know a gig every night. Right. Yeah. Right. Especially in Europe. <laughs> oh, yeah. really? So is yeah. is like the uh, the the just headlining at a club or having a what's it called a residency at a club is that not such a thing anymore it, it it's it is but it's not like every you have very many not many bands doing this like they're doing like a two-week tour every night anywhere else so, yeah because you just don't draw the people so people are tired they'd rather go to a festival uh -huh. in europe you can say they'd rather go to a festival yeah. where they can see like 20 bands for the similar price <laughs> right you know so <laughs> it, it's quite it's quite difficult so it, it, again it depends if, you, if you're a major band who pulls like twenty thousand people into every show it's a different book it's money so they will have shows they will have every day somewhere else so it's different but you know we're talking lower level now you know it, it's just not valuable because you have all the travel costs you have all your crew you have the back line you have to kind yeah. all of that you know your of course your hotels and and then to cover your bills it's it's hard so so a lot of european tours now is sort of a thursday friday saturday fly uh -huh. home fly back out on a sort of a wednesday or a thursday the next week and they, they, they sort of do that more yeah and that actually sounds a lot more comfortable and sustainable than trying to do like six weeks on a bus exactly yeah. exactly <laughs> totally. awesome yeah yeah, yeah. So um, after Fury Road came out, you guys really adopted the Warboy persona as like almost part of your band. Uh, yeah. I, you know, you always bring Warboys up on we are stage. Part of the, well, we are part of the V8 tribe. So they are, they are our family, V8. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And and yeah, you, you mentioned earlier um, when you're on stage at Wasteland, you almost always bring the whole tribe up on stage oh, yes, and they're just up there having a great time. That's it. They're our family. So they are, they are our support. And yeah, we love the guys, you know, on scene, you know, they're, they're, they're naughty ones. So are we, so it's just per perfect. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> we're, yeah. We're the naughty corner of Wasteland weekend. So we normally <laughs> hang around with the war boys. So uh -huh. our, they're the tribe we sort of spend virtually all the time with. So the war boys, uh, also big shout out to tank and uh, the dogs of war. Uh huh. Uh, and Captain Timmy, but mainly if you see drunk war boys staggering around, <laughs> it's normally with V two A. That's so funny because uh, I camp with the Dukes of the Nuke, which is right next yeah. door. But you guys put up that fence, and I think that <laughs> has kept us from hanging out more. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we are a part of the bill, so that's down yeah. to, to, the, to the camp, obviously. So uh, yeah, I, I can't, cre yeah, I can't take credit for that. <laughs> yeah, next time if that fence goes up, I'm just going to make a gateway so that we can <laughs> yeah, hang out no. more. Exactly. <laughs> but then be so, careful that they don't take you as a blood bag and hang you in their cages and take your head. <laughs> There's always the risk of <laughs> yeah. being a blood bag. <laughs> that's it. Always. It, it, I must admit, the first first wasteland weekend we did uh, four year, four or five years ago. Um, because because we we got on well with them all online, uh, Michael, uh -huh. who's the head of uh, the Warboy, so we're all really really close friends. Yeah. And, uh, 
So we said, no, we're coming over, time. you know, so, yeah. so they obviously thought, you know, this mad band from England is coming over. And uh, we, of course, on, I think it was a Thursday night, we were all went out drinking. So there's us and about 30 war boys. Uh-huh. And, and they, somebody had the cunning plan to go and meet all the other tribes and try and drink all their drinks. <laughs> so, oh, you you did the uh, the wasteland pub crawl. That yes, was it, the wasteland it. pub crawl. So we started off at about I don't know eleven o'clock at night, and uh, we went off with about thirty war boys. And about six o'clock in the morning, we arrived back at <laughs> camp with three war boys. We lost yeah. them. <laughs> that is amazing. Uh, Highly entertaining. Great. Oh my gosh! And and the the war boys um, the. The um, Order of the V8, they're an amazing tribe. They're always in full body paint, yes. uh, mostly shaved yeah. heads. Yeah, definitely. Um, Very dedicated. Yeah, yeah they just they're add organized. so much to the atmosphere of Wasteland. And, and they're, totally. they're really great friends. And so at first, the first few years, they they everybody loved the V2A Firewater. But uh-huh. it really does give you a hangover. It's a monster hangover. <laughs> they try to stay away from it now. Yeah. So if yeah. you ever see like ten war boys stood on the, you know, the the city wall, all looking a bit grumpy, going, oh, <laughs> "Witness," that's because they've been out with V two A the night before. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah, because yeah. they they very often do kind of look like they're out of their minds a little bit. Yeah, but it's hard going. You <laughs> think they're in, in the desert, you know, and it's like the desert sun, and they're dedicated, so they have like a proper plan in place, you know who is going which time so it's like proper planned out who is standing on the city walls and who is doing yeah. you know what jobs so it's, it's I, very awesome organized I, we get on so well with the tribe though because both being sort of the naughty corner uh-huh. we sort of go hey guys let's all do karaoke <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then so there's there's v2a and about 30 war boys drunk in one of the one of the little places doing a karaoke or something. It's it's bizarre. It's good fun. Yeah. I think yeah. Brenner took over now, I think, the yes. lead of the... That's right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, she's Michael, awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Bren is amazing. She They're, is. Um, she, what such awesome a great... lady. She is just... Like, I love yeah. her. She's just amazing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, what a treat. And I'm, I'm glad they took over because, um, you know, it's it's really hard to run a tribe. It is. Yeah. And I think she's yeah. the lady for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, Michael, uh, who goes by captain, he was actually captain of the elite guard. So Originally, the, when it started, correct. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he was doing more of a Thunderdome type of deal. Um, and eventually, you know, he was like, all right, I've done this for a few years. Uh, Fury Road just came out and he just wanted to try something new and yeah. created created the order, which is fantastic. It is amazing. It is absolutely so, amazing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's why we're not a V2A tribe. We're a cult, the cult of V2A. Because it's, it's, it's also cool when you sort of meet people that you used to go to school with and they're like, oh, what are you doing nowadays? And you go, I'm a cult leader. <laughs> <laughs> and then they normally scuttle off and not talk to you ever again. So that's highly entertaining. Yeah. Oh, dear. Yeah, there are so many wonderful cults at Wasteland, and they're all in good fun. You know, yeah, they're not the real, it. like, like exactly. we're all going to uh, commit suicide next weekend cults. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, they're all in good fun, and it is such a blast because uh, the great thing is at Wasteland, you can be a member of multiple cults. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's it. No, but you I know? think on Wasteland, I, I think it's all this getting together, and it's just the whole atmosphere, you know. I just yeah. love it. Yeah. Um, so did you guys end up playing Apocalypse East um, at the last event? No, we didn't. We couldn't. We didn't. We were booked, but that's uh-huh. when COVID started. Yeah. Uh, so we are we are definitely coming out. Uh, we've yep. also been asked to do a East Coast tour and a West Coast tour. So Fantastic. we're gonna we're gonna hit a lot more of the states. We've got a load of US fans now, thanks to Wasteland Weekend and playing uh-huh. so many years. Uh, we love the states. Love the food. I'm a massive fan of. <laughs> is it IHOP? <laughs> oh, yeah. you, you know you know that that's like our um what is it um N- nando's here it's oh. not <laughs> great food <laughs> that, that's exactly what he likes i love, yeah. I love bad he doesn't food. do healthy yeah I don't oh do gotcha so wow awesome so we're super excited about that but at the moment we're on lockdown so uh as soon as we're allowed back out we're, we are on be, total travel j- stop at the moment in the yeah, country. Be, so yeah, we're in, in USA. <laughs> we are coming. Also, next year, we're headlining the Mad Max 2 40-year anniversary over in Australia. Fantastic. So that would be cool. And we've also been asked to tour Japan. So I, I oh, can't wow. wait for that. That will be, be great fun. See what they make of us over there. 
that's actually something I've been curious about is, is there a, a big Asian following of the post-apocalypse? Cause you know, there's obviously a language barrier when I'm trying to Google. Yeah. Oh, there, no, there is. So <laughs> there we've, is. Uh, one of our mates, uh, Tomo. Um, uh-huh. so, so the cult of V2A is worldwide. So uh, Tomo runs a big Mad Max festivals over in Japan. So uh, we're going to go and do some stuff with him. So you have to come over with us, bring your camera. Post oh, that would be fantastic in, in Japan. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, I'm always worried about language barriers. It's tough to make it around the world, but, uh, I guess if you're going to travel, English is the language to go with. <laughs> <laughs> Hand and feet yeah. always help because we sp- played in Spain and nobody speaks any English and no German because I'm German, but they didn't uh-huh. speak anything like that. So they were all like talking to us. I did not have a clue. And I just was laughing with them that was and then we all festival. got drunk and it's like, yeah, it's always hand and feet help as well. Yeah. We, we played gotcha. a festival in Spain called uh, Luna Negra. Yes. Black, Black I'm, I'm, yeah. I've been following along with them. Crazy. Crazy. We had a bloke dressed in a chicken outfit. On stage, diving. Diving. Yeah. <laughs> Spanish crowds are crazy. Oh, so fun! Yeah, they they have the images that come out of Luna Negra, and I know they only do their festival every two years. Yeah, but but they are putting on a show. Also, Junk Town. A big shout out to Junk Town, which is in. Oh, let's get this right. Czech, Czech Republic. Republic. Yeah, Czech yeah. Republic. That, that was the most mind blowing one for me so far. Eastern yeah. Europe. Yeah. Because Damn. they have the, they have like this old army base, you see. So it's a uh-huh. big it's a big ground. Well, let's say it's like the, nuclear bunker it's place. It's supposed to be the size like wasteland size wise, but it's every, every tribe has their own bunkers, under earth bunkers. And the uh-huh. and the clubs are in bunkers and the, 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 the shows are in bunkers and you have outside it's just surreal. It's super awesome. And they have um, some LARP elements, right? They do yeah. a few days of LARP and then kind of open it up to a regular festival. Oh, that's, um, that's, no, old, that's old Town. town. Oh, okay. That's I get that you're one. confused. Yeah, yeah I do. That was in one. Poland and they do their own alcohol there and we lost a drummer <laughs> over it. <laughs> one of our drummers got so ill with alcohol, he was not allowed to play with us ever again. By Possibly his atomic oh, coffee issues. Like, I think he had too much of that because we just g- gave them bottle cups. We took a bottle cups and we could drink. <laughs> <laughs> so we didn't have to pay for anything and we just got just totally well i was all right and normally i'm the one who gets ill but i was not but it was a drummer this time and he could not oh even come gosh. on stage he was so ill he could not even go on he stage he couldn't play so we had to use oh, drum no. machines and he was not allowed to come and play with v2 ever again <laughs> <laughs> i mean you can't uh you, you can't mess up a show come on <laughs> <I'm not laughs> well it wasn't us forbidding him it was his wife oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his wife wouldn't let him back out again. It's like when you knock on somebody's door, can you, you know, can you come can out you to come play? play? No. 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 <laughs> What's oh my gosh. Was she there? Like did she no, witness this happen? No, no, oh, no. no. So he went back and said, "Hey, honey, but, you uh, know, I got so drunk time, I couldn't play." And all the yeah. time he was looked after. So it wasn't like getting him in the corner dying. So it's like um I don't know you sure you spoke to Mark Corduroy and his wife is is a is a doctor, so she looked after him very really well. So yeah. you know, and we even had the ambulance out and everything. So he was you know, medically he just looked had after. a major hangover. And he oh my gosh. deal with it, yeah. Basically it was. And you mentioned Mark. I I, I got to uh, the chance to talk to him on this show yeah. pretty recently. Yeah, um, he's a very good friend of ours. He, he just yeah, lives he... around the let's say around the corner for American terms. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> so he doesn't live far from us. <laughs> That's great. And yeah, he was uh, d- complaining about being locked in this house as well. Um, yeah, I know. You, yeah, you guys are quarantined way harder than we are here. Because I'm in Nashville, which is uh, oh, wow. in Tennessee. It's a bit of a red state yeah. still. Uh, so, you know, freedom, guns and freedom. Okay. Um, and um, so, yeah, we're kind of almost in regular life, almost, well, the uh, thing which is, is kind of wild. We went back into normal life-ish, so which was uh-huh. like autumn time. So when you could feel you could do more, you could go to not clubs or anything, but you could yeah. go to restaurants and just meet some friends and go out and, you know, you sort of normal life. But yeah. then um, Christmas came and then we had these variants and these yeah. new variants, they were 70% more aggressive and deadly. So we had like, it, it rocketed up. We had like daily 1500 people dying. For, you know, we are only a small island. So we only, right. you know, for America against UK, it's, we are just a little blob. <laughs> and, you know, like since Christmas or since New Year, we have like over 1500 people dying a day and it's just like yeah. we had 60,000 people infected and, and now we have the new 
African variant where they don't know. Right. The, and it's just like, it's going yeah. crazy. So nobody knows. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah. So possibly soon the zombies come, as I said. Won't be long. Now. <laughs> can't be. Can't be long. <laughs> yeah. Why couldn't it have been zombies? <laughs> yeah, would zombies would have been great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it possibly comes with some Russian vaccine. We will see. <laughs> well, also um, over here, I've I've got my own sort of post-apocalyptic road legal buggy. And oh, good. There's, and there's not that there's not many of us in the UK because the weather's crap. So there's uh-huh. not many sort of June buggy people in the UK. Um, uh huh. But see, I was waiting. As soon, as soon as the post-apocalyptic hit, I was ready to stick my flamethrower on the top and drive up and down the high street. Uh, but yeah, we're banned. So. Uh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. So much disappoint. Oh, no. <laughs> we're banned and you can't find toilet rolls anywhere. It's, it's crazy. Still? Our weather is not that great here either. <laughs> I know the toilet rolls are back now. Okay, uh, good. We good. had certain people, <laughs> certain, certain um, not very bright people decided – that they were going to buy like five years worth of toilet rolls uh-huh uh, you know so yeah yeah <laughs> and Crazy. and now they're they're just stuck with them now they're stuck with them yes <laughs> yeah yeah we, we had people trying to uh return uh hundreds of rolls to like walmart <laughs> 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 to, to the point where they stopped accepting toilet paper returns <laughs> oh my gosh that's crazy yeah. Yeah, because they, they were doing the same thing. They were just stocking up, um, maybe trying to but sell it why? on eBay, why? you know, why? at a big yeah. markup. But why would you think like, oh, it's apocalypse. Let's get toilet paper. Well, you don't even, <laughs> you know, you don't even get diarrhea. So I don't even know what your problem is here. I still can't follow it up. <laughs> it's a strange one, isn't it? So a quick yeah. question to you. So yeah. uh, what what are your favorite uh, post-apocalyptic festivals in the U.S.? Um, so, so far I've actually, and this is really unfortunate. I've only been to wasteland and to detonation, which is uranium Springs. Yeah. Right. Um, and now that I'm in the Southeast, I do have plans to get to aftermath to, um, a few others. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it There's is. It's more coming now, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, apocalypse East is up in Pennsylvania. I really want to go to that one because I'm actually from new England, which is the Northeast. Okay. Um, so that would be kind of, you know, my not my local now but it would have been my local yeah. before <laughs> yeah it, yeah, yeah um, it's kind of it's kind of wild because they they're always popping up here and there there's there's another one in Oklahoma um, uh, Falls uh, atomic Falls um, I want to get to that one that one seems to be a pretty big one um, and then right. there's there's a whole bunch of people up in the Pacific Northwest that have been putting on a smaller festival I forget what that one's called but um, yeah and you know what I I do love the the aspect of these smaller festivals even though you know wasteland's up around five thousand people no um, yeah. and my first wasteland was about 700 so yeah. a lot of the festivals even it's after glowing. a few years are still under that yeah um yeah. but there's such a there's an intimacy and a and a, a more relaxed atmosphere at these smaller festivals that i also enjoy yeah well, like um, I said earlier, it depends what you want out of it. So if you just want to have a chill, you know, you don't go to big festivals where it's just um boom. You can have smaller events. So, yeah. Right. And and some of the smaller events outside of Wasteland, um, because they're not as big and not as official, um, they can do a lot more things where you could possibly get injured. Uh, yeah. So, so um, maybe then I shouldn't go. <laughs> no, I mean, no, I mean it as a good thing. Like, you know, there's cart races and um, some of them have uh, live firing ranges where, you know, you can oh, actually wow. shoot guns. Yeah, no, um, but my comment was I'm accident prone. Oh, I see. <laughs> and, and, and because and she's I do so, everything. <laughs> yeah, and because she's so accident prone, she has to always have a go in a Thunderdome wherever we are. Oh really? I yeah. love Thunderdome. Oh wow! And so, have you gotten hurt in Thunderdome yet? No, I won both times. I've been twice so far. I've been in Spain in one, and I've been in the Wasteland one. And oh, I great. survived it, but it's hard. It's hard. Uh huh. It's not easy. You need you need to be fit. Let's say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it it it's just like any kind of fight, right? You, yeah. You'll you'll get drained of energy really fast. Really fast because it's like because it's not only you have to fight, you have to hang, you have to hold on, and it's 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 quite I underestimated it, but it's fun. Yeah. And it takes your full body just to stay balanced. Yeah, that's you, you know, there's a lot much to it. And then the guys they throw you, so you, you know. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if they're funny. there to help or to make it harder. Yeah, I don't know that either yet. I haven't worked that out, but it was fun. 
<laughs> yeah, that's actually another experience I haven't done yet. And um, it, I, I do need to remedy that. Yeah, you should do. Even so, you yeah. sign away your life, you know, <laughs> before you <laughs> right. enter it. So you have to sign yeah. all the rights away, which is fine, you know. Yeah, but it's, I've it's got fun. insurance now. <laughs> yeah. if, if people uh, don't know what it is if you if you imagine human conquers do you have conquers do you play conquers? i don't know what a con- i don't oh, know yeah, what a conquer yeah. is it's English oh. thing now it's, it's i didn't Brit- know either <laughs> it's a british thing so it's a it's like a it's like a a seed from a, a tree it's like a big like rock seed thing from a tree and what and, and when you're a kid you play conquers so you drill a hole in it and then uh-huh. you try and whack each other's conkers. Does that make any sense? <laughs> so you have a go and he has a go. And uh, like you it, normally go for each other's hands. It, it's, it gets very tactical. That shows it didn't make it out of the island walls. It's, it's an <laughs> still on the <laughs> island, let's say. All right, so what I'm imagining right now is like a giant walnut on a string that you're just... That's it, that you're whacking yeah. each other, the other person's walnut with. It's, it's, it's it sounds, Oh, God. Yeah. Okay. It, it's and you're trying to break sport. the other nut? Yeah, yeah, it's a noble sport from kings. You know, this is what... You know, I'm going to have to look up. I'm sure there's video of this, right? It is slight. It's, you're going to be slightly disappointed. That's all I can okay. say. But we might try and bring that to Wasteland Weekend. You know, let's try and get tea drinking in Conkers. Well, have you ever played the Rust Devils game where you've got to go find somebody and ah, uh, well, and kill them? <laughs> yes. there's a story. There's a story <laughs> to this. I uh, was I was headhunted. Well, and they didn't find me which is really surprisingly. And then I had my target I had to find, and I didn't find him. So uh-huh. I, and I'm German, I'm very competitive, and I don't like losing. <laughs> so on stage on our show, I then got all our Warboy tribe and everybody in the audience trying to find the guy. And we still didn't find him. So I'm no I, I, now I don't think that he was at the event. I think he was only a day and then disappeared. So uh-huh. <laughs> even with my Warboy tribe and everybody in the audience, we didn't find him. And I still oh can't my believe gosh. this. <laughs> and my friend, she still can't believe that I did it. This so is typical <laughs> mechanized. So she stopped the gig. <laughs> I got a little big bit of paper out and said, guys, has anybody seen this person in the audience? Because I'm trying to catch them. <laughs> <laughs> and I still didn't get him. I feel him. like I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, I didn't get him. That's hilarious. We went around with, with a tribe, with a war boy tribe. We went around uh-huh. with Warspawn from, from camp to camp with a picture in the hand. Have you seen him? So we had all the war boys <laughs> and now we didn't. We didn't find him. Wow. Yeah, the uh, the game, I think, started when Wasteland was around 1,000 or 1,200 people. So it was a lot easier to find people back then. Yeah. Um, and now uh, with it being, you know, in the multi-thousands, it's, uh, it's a bit harder. Um, I have played bounty hunting one time. And, you know, normally I'm just too busy and I, I don't get to kind of go and, and gallivant through tent city. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I, so I signed up, I got my picture taken. I got my wanted poster. I put it up on the wall. I grabbed another wanted poster. and I'm like, I'm going to find this person. Yeah. And, um, the, the Dukes of the Nuke, we camp right across the street from Rust Devils like you guys do. Yeah. And, and so I walked back to my camp and I'm like, you know, kind of gearing up for my next rounds and immediately someone comes over he's like hey you're makeshift and i was like yeah he's like uh time to rosham bro oh, <laughs> shit. And, and we and we rock paper scissored because i didn't have um <laughs> any kind of special task for him and yeah. he won and i was like well that was fun <laughs> yeah, oh. so i got taken out within probably five minutes oh, yeah <laughs> yeah no so i should have known to go days. hide yeah definitely yeah. Uh, also, just a big shout out to Waste, uh, Wasted Saints. Uh, love that club. That's a, a brilliant one. I've DJed there a couple of times, and uh, we always go mad in that one. We always somehow end up there at the yeah, end of the, the night. The Wasted Saints are definitely one of my favorite tribes to go visit because they're always putting on something ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> it is my exactly. favorite place to go. It's so good. Yeah, I think they've got an event which is just a, a butt contest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's just a booty shaking contest. They, that's where they host boozy yoga uh, wow. on Saturday morning. Uh, it said I heard it's they did yoga somewhere, yeah. but I couldn't find it. Ah. To be fair, we've never seen a morning. I don't think. No. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> I I haven't made it yet, but I was I was actually just talking to Mitzi Mayhem. She puts it on. Uh, she's one of the burlesque troupe. Uh, leaders there okay. uh, right. she's with the molotov mollies and so she'll do a, you know a burlesque show late at night and then the next morning she'll wake up groggy 
and go do Bozy yoga, which has become very popular. Yeah, yeah. I, I must help. It must help. The blood flow. I have to yeah, try go it. sweat it out a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> we normally sort of get up around two in the afternoon. Uh-huh. <laughs> Let them slowly wake up. Yeah, normally. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've seen um, way too many sunrises at uh, Wasteland, and it's not from waking up early. Exactly. No. <laughs> uh, also, where we normally, because uh, we, we normally have sort of Mark Corduroy camping near us, so we've got our oh, RVs. Cool. We have like a, a little England, uh, a little area where we have like a little England. We have a, you know, tea bags and cups of tea and stuff. We're going uh-huh. we'll to have to have an afternoon tea uh, next one. Get some yeah. cucumber sandwiches and invite all the other tribes over. Oh, that sounds fantastic. And maybe some clotted cream and biscuits. Yeah, definitely. And then we can all play conkers. <laughs> oh, dear. Glad I think I'm this German. needs to be a thing. Yeah. It's got to be a thing. This is going to be, it's going to set the world alight. Well, yeah. Is there a German equivalent to this? No. <laughs> it did not no. make it over the walls of England. I never heard of it. <laughs> I love it. All right, guys. Well, um, this has been such a blast. Um, Thank you so much for coming and hanging out. Yeah, well, thank you for having us. It was really great fun. Yeah, definitely. And you're always welcome to come over here to to Europe and uh, trips around with us to, to some of the big festivals we're playing at. Uh, oh, that would be loads fantastic! Of some amazing stuff we've got planned. So, by by all means, you're always welcome. I would absolutely love that. Yeah, well, let's let's talk about that some more because it's something I'll, I definitely need to do. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Let's awesome. Hope well, this, I'll talk to you guys. Pandemic soon. goes. I <laughs> know. As soon as we're allowed out. Yeah, so, can we get back to the real world so we can yes, get back please. to the apocalypse, please? <laughs> yeah. To the real apocalypse. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Yes. Well, great. Um, definitely, everyone out there, make sure you check out V2A. Uh, v- V2A.co.uk, is that right? That's, that's the it. website, and, and yeah. And also on Facebook. We're on Facebook. and stuff. Yeah, that's your biggest presence, right? Yeah, yeah, that's Facebook. Yeah. That's and it. what's? Do you know the URL off the top of your head? Oh, <laughs> okay. I can find it. No, I got it. It's facebook.com slash V2A music. That's it. That's it. Yeah. We're, we're normally on Facebook. That's our, that's our normal haunt on the yeah. internet. Awesome. Um, the comic book, follow along for the comic book that's coming out really soon. Um, yeah. There's also the YouTube. You have a, you have your V2A YouTube and the Freak Show. That's two different pages. So follow yeah. along with both. One has all your music. One has the freak show, which is more of Correct. like a talk show about That's the it. apocalypse at large. And yes. we've got a really good guest on next week. Somebody from America. Can't remember yes. his name, but <laughs> <laughs> it'll come back to me sometime. So that's going to yeah. be great for next week. And also we always have like, um, we've got a load of friends from the Mad Max films and directors and stuff like that from film companies. And so we've always got people sort of popping in, Fantastic. Uh, which is always fun. It's just, yeah. it's just chaos. Yeah, the show's been great. I've been I've been following along, and you guys always have a good time and a good laugh. It's it's yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah awesome. Well, okay. all right, survivors, we're gonna wrap it up with V two A. Any last notes for everyone out there, guys? Yeah, stay safe, drink a lot. You know, you need to keep this virus out of your body, so stay hydrated, drink good vodka. Uh, well, that's a very good one. Uh, and also, uh, <laughs> please join the cult of V two A. It's you know. It's the end of the world is nigh, so become a cult member. But don't <laughs> drink the Kool-Aid. <laughs> <laughs> well, Drone and Mechanize, you guys have been awesome. Thanks so much. Um, for all you survivors out there, if you liked this episode, share it with your friends. If you hated it, share it with your enemies via a war boy <laughs> singing telegram. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'll see you all next time, survivors. Stay alive. Bye. Bye. Hey, Survivors, if you want to help support The Apocalypse Post and get some rad merch in exchange, head over to theapocalypsepost.square.site, where you can pick up some patches, postcards, or our newest edition, a set of guitar picks. Or get yourself a limited edition Apocabob pin. This little man is showing the world that all it takes to survive the end times is a gas mask and a dream of, well, just staying alive.